Being able to accurately gauge fair market rent and maximum potential rent is crucial when underwriting multifamily properties. If you get this part wrong, it's going to throw everything you do off from that point onward. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through five things to look at when analyzing market comps. So make sure you hit the subscribe button right now so you don't miss more videos about building wealth through multifamily real estate. And if you don't know me, I'm Seth Ferguson, a 12 year real estate veteran, host of a real estate TV show, host of a real estate investing podcast, and I'm also the author of the real estate book, Sell For More. So let's get right into it and talk about analyzing market comps. The first question you're probably asking yourself is, what does he mean by market comp? Market comp is short for comparable, and comparable really means a comparable similar property in a market that gives us a good apples to apples comparison. Now, why are we looking for comparables or comps in the first place? Well, we're really looking for proof in the market uh, that the market is able to support uh, that level of rent or that level of upgrade. So let me give you an example here. Let's say we're looking at a value add deal. And if you're not sure what value add means, I'm going to put a link right up here uh, to a video I did all about the value add strategy. We, need, we really need to figure out two things. Number one, what is current market value for rents? So rents, current. And then we need to figure out what is the market supporting in terms of upgraded rent? So maximum rent because our current property could be uh, paying, let's say, 1500 bucks on average a month uh, per unit. Number one, we have to figure out, is this property just a unicorn or is the market really supporting this? We need to look for similar properties in that market to figure out if the property we're looking at, uh, the, rent, the rents they're getting are at market value, below market value, or over market value. This is really important when we're figuring out what room we have to add value to that property. And then let's say we are below market rent. What is the maximum rent that we can achieve in that marketplace? And what do we need to do to achieve that market rent? This is where comparables become very, very important. And like I said in that introduction, if we get this stuff wrong, that's going to throw all of our spreadsheets, all of our underwriting, it's going to make it all a mess and we won't be able to rely on it. So finding solid comparables is crucial to good underwriting. Now let's get into the five things that we need to look at when we're analyzing comps. The first thing we have to look at is vintage or the age of the property. This makes a big deal. This makes a big difference uh, in terms of rents and tenant experience. Just walk through a 1970s property and an early 2000s property. They are light years apart in terms of construction style, layout, amenities offered. So when we're looking for good solid comps to make sure our underwriting is solid, we need, to make, we need to make sure we're looking at comparable properties that are true apples to apples comparisons. So if the property we're looking at is 1990s, let's say 1997, we should be looking for similar properties in that market of similar vintage. So again, you know, mid to late 90s construction to give us that true apples to apples. The second thing we look at is size. And I don't just mean size of the property in general, I'm talking about size of the units because especially vintage affects us too. Just look at a 1980s construction versus a 2010 construction. The size of the units is really going to shift um, as building styles change and as markets condense. So in terms of size, if we're looking at a comparable property that's 25% bigger on average per unit than our property, we're going to have to take that into account because the rent they're achieving is most likely going to be bigger or greater than our rent if everything else stays the same. So this is why a lot of people break rent down into rent per square foot, dollar per square foot. And, but still, even though you're breaking down per square foot, tenants are going to pay a premium most likely for a larger square footage. So you really have to pay attention to the size of the overall units on average, size of the properties, all that sort of stuff to make sure again, you're comparing apples to apples and not oranges to apples or sometimes bananas. Number three is amenities. 
if we're looking at a, a property as a potential comparable and they have a state-of-the-art theater, they have a pool, they have a sauna, they have a whole uh, workout uh, area, a gym, they've got a dog park uh, barbecue pit, and our subject property, the property we're underwriting, only has a pool, we're going to have to take that into account because that other property, that comparable, is not a good apples to apples comparison because they have way more amenities and tenants will pay more for quality amenities. And that's going to skew the rent we're looking at. And when we're looking at whether or not we're achieving fair market rent, if we're above or below, and what our maximum rent is, if our comparable we're looking at for maximum rent has all those amenities and we don't have all of them, we're really going to have to shift things up and, and uh, do some pluses and minuses to make sure that we're coming up with a realistic figure on our maximum rent because we're missing those amenities that that comparable has. Number four is location. Location, 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 they say in real estate. And that is so true when we're looking at comparables. Let's say our subject property, the property we are underwriting is located in a premium area and all the other comparables of the same vintage size and amenities are located in less desirable areas. Chances are we will be able to charge a premium on our rent because tenants will pay a premium for a premium location. So we really have to take this into account when we're looking at comparables and underwriting the deal, trying to understand our uh, maximum rents, fair market rents, really look at the location. Are you in a superior location to your comparables or are you in a neutral or inferior location to the comps? And that's going to dictate whether or not you take the, uh, the comparable rents at 100% or maybe you're knocking off 10% to account for location variances. Number five is upgrades. Let's say we're looking at a 1980s uh, vintage property and it hasn't been renovated in a while and our comparables, even though they're similar vintage, have different levels of upgrades. Maybe some have been totally renovated inside, brand new kitchens, new flooring, and others are 50-50, so 50% vanilla and then 50% upgraded. What does our subject property look like? Because tenants will pay for those upgraded features. Uh, maybe it's ensuite laundry. So uh, maybe one comparable property doesn't have ensuite laundry. You have to figure out how much tenants are paying in that market for having that ensuite. So maybe it's a 50 or $75 premium a month just to have ensuite laundry. And this is really helpful when we're figuring out our maximum rent that we can achieve as we implement our value add process. If we're seeing a good increase, a, a good delta between fair market rent, what we're achieving now, and our maximum potential rent, we might want to consider adding that ensuite laundry into the units uh, to get that $75 bump per month in terms of rent. Or what uh, sort of premium are tenants paying for an upgraded kitchen package? Maybe that's quartz countertops having a backsplash, uh, stainless steel appliances. Does that make sense in our business plan to do those upgrades to achieve that rent premium that our comparables are demonstrating that the market is, is supporting? This is so important. All of, these, uh, all of these things are so important. We have to look for proof in the market. We can't just guess that a tenant that the market will bear a $100 increase if we do X, Y, and Z renovations. We have to look for proof in the market that the market is currently supporting that sort of pricing when it comes to rent based on upgrades, age, size, vintage amenities, all that stuff. A big mistake some investors make is they just assume the market is going to pay X for some sort of upgrades when they have found no proof by looking at comps and apples to apples comparisons um, in that marketplace. It is so important to understand fully the vintage, the age, how that impacts rents, the size of the units, uh, how much more of a premium are tenants paying for larger units, the amenities offered, the location and upgrades. These are five things you really have to look at when you are underwriting to make sure your numbers, your spreadsheets, your forecasts are going to be as accurate as possible. If you're interested in possibly investing in one of my deals, let's talk about it. Go to callsouth.com and set up a free 20 minute phone call with me. And if you like this video, if you found this useful, hit the like button, leave a comment, let me know what you think. And until next time, happy investing.